Salaam and welcome and thank you for joining us again. Rasulullah was sent as a mercy to mankind with one mission, to perfect our characters. We often attend lectures on the importance of akhlaq or good character and how it should be developed, but how is strength of character linked to overall spiritual and emotional well-being? We have the example of Lady Zainab alayhi salam's strength. However, in this episode, we want to explore her character and particularly her strength in more detail. Lady Zainab alayhi salam had so much strength in her life. What does strength of character mean to you? I mean, strength of character is just being able to have the strength to withhold your moral values, your principles. And with that said, it's, I don't think it's how you act. I think it's your subconscious. I think it's your conscious just yeah. telling you what kind of person that you need to be. And the strength comes within that. You know, the being able to stand up needs a strength on its own. Yeah, definitely. Strength of character is, is staying true to your morals and your traditions mm -hmm. and your values, um, which is something that to some degree can be inherited. Yeah. Um, and some other degrees, actually environmental. It's the more uh, you practice it over and over again, the more it's solidified within you and within your brain. As you said, there, so it subconsciously comes out as you, as you do something or subconsciously that thought or that opinion uh, you will hold about a certain situation. I've been through so many different situations where I've had to display a strength of character. And when I say strength of character, it's with holding on to my principles and morals, because especially within this society today, it's quite difficult to do that. And I think those times come when I'm at university, those times when I come at, when I'm at work and having to be put through different situations. And you have to make sure that you're still maintaining hijab, for example, still yeah. maintaining your own beliefs so I as in for since a young age ever since I was young I've had so many different friends and they've always told me okay let's let's go uh, for example here's a cigarette and I was only 11 at the time I think when someone offered me their first uh, the, the first cigarette and I said no mm. and uh, as an 11 year old mm. it was I just felt so empowered when I said no and I was so adamant I was like how could you even ask me knowing that mm. I'm not someone who smokes and it had nothing to do with my age because that was never a problem back then. It was, you know, I don't smoke. You know that I find it wrong. It, smoking kills. Why are you trying to give it to me? And I just remember being so angry, but so empowered at the same time because I had said no so strongly. And I had gone back home and I had told yeah. my mom about the situation. Yeah. And she praised me. She said, I'm so proud of you. Yeah. And that, that I, I, I felt quite chuffed. And yeah. even till today, even till today, as a... As, a, as an adult now, I have so many other people telling me, so I was teaching and one of the teachers said to me, we had just finished the school and she said, oh, okay, well, all, all us and me and the other teachers were going to go out for a drink. Why don't you come with us? And I said, I looked at her and I said, yeah, sorry, I don't drink. Yeah. She, and she sat there for a good hour just apologizing yeah. because she didn't realize, she said, I completely forgot that you don't drink. I should have made that assumption. And I said, it, it's fine. You ask. Because realistically, you can't make that assumption straight away. Yeah. But you can kind of, it, it, it did bother me in a way, but I also felt that, you know, I, I don't. Yeah. And I felt so strong in that. I do feel it is easier for those, with those that don't know. Yeah. It's so much easier for us to explain our morals or stand strong to them with uh, non-Muslims. Because having to explain why you don't do a certain thing to another Muslim that it should be it should be stand but it should be automatic that they don't do yeah. it as well but you have to explain to them why you're not doing it yeah and then it hits harder when it's someone for example close to you like a close family friend for instance yeah. or or even within your very close circle when they treat with lack of morals and discipline and integrity when they do that and you you're both from the same background same religion same faith same families that makes it more difficult and then you go two ways you either know you're 100% right and you're going to stand true to that and you know Allah subhanahu is watching or you start questioning yourself because when you look for it, you see that everybody else is doing, doing it. it yeah. There is that lack of honesty. There is that lack of respect common like between um, us and the older generation, between, uh, between us. It's really, really sad. Yeah. Very, very unfortunate. I think like this day and age, it's become a lot more relaxed. Like religion yeah. has become a lot more relaxed. And there's, yeah. especially when you go to university, so many people are doing things and you're just like, yeah. Like I was brought up like this. Like exactly. I don't do these things. Exactly. And because people are doing it around you, 
they assume, oh, you're going to do it too. And I'm like, well, no, just because you're doing it doesn't mean I will. Yeah. So I think when I was younger, because I grew up around like, there was barely any Muslims around me. So I had yeah. to stay strong with my faith. And that when like Ramadan time and stuff, I was the only person fasting. Yeah. Um, I had like girls taunting me. And they made me sit in the canteen and like girls would taunt me with food. And I could easily like eat it and been like, oh yeah, it's fine. I'll just give up fasting because yeah. it's easier to accept and be accepted by them because yeah. then I wouldn't look weird. But I knew what it meant yeah. and I, I knew the importance of it. So yeah. obviously I was going to stand my ground and be like, no, this is what I believe in, yeah. whether you like it or not. I, I really think care. we've got that strength of character more than the next generation. It's really, I've seen that from through work experience and even through personal uh, relationships where mm. the younger generation, it's a massive group, for example, of boys or girls and they're all Muslims and they yeah. all dress modestly, let's say, for instance, the girls. And it would be Shah Ramadan, but you see them, for example, breaking their fast and then coming back home, acting like they are still fasting and yeah. breaking their fast with their families at the same iftar table and their parents are in ignorance. So then that is the next generation and it's really sad because i do wonder where the, where, where where did we go wrong i think that's an age gap thing like yeah. between their parents and the younger generation i've noticed that they, were, they feel like they can't talk to their parents as that's much that's the thing yeah so then they feel like their parents are going to judge them more yeah. be more strict yeah. enforce religion on them a bit more exactly so then they feel like oh we can't do certain things and they want to fit in more as well exactly and uh, it that's also, what it falls back on like, yeah. apologies but that's yeah. what it falls back on they're trying to fit in with today's society with their yeah. generation yeah and it's so they they're they've got their own struggles yeah. now they don't speak to their parents because of those struggles because mm. they don't think they'll understand which is f completely fair to them yeah because i i will say parents don't understand some mm. of the things that young people go through and not fasting that just kind of shows that they're swaying in a way with how the the society around them is how their communities the people yeah. they surround themselves with mm -hmm. affect and impact their life and their choices i think it also goes to show like for example the instance you've mentioned the experience that you've had and you went back and you told your mother and the way she praised you she still mentioned what was wrong in that scenario yeah. but how well you've done it and that positive conditioning is is what's important yeah. i feel like nowadays kids go to their parents because a they don't know what the right answer should be and they want that guidance and then their parents end up arguing with them or telling them off for hanging with mm. people like that in the first place yeah. Yeah. and that doesn't help instead they should be exactly. raising their awareness to tell them listen what happened is wrong but you've done the right thing and this is wrong this is right it's your choice yeah. Allah Subhanahu has blessed us with a brain and our brain is matured I think by the age of seven and then after that what, what is the quote that says for the first seven years you should be teaching them and after that you should be their best friend yeah. basically yeah. I know a girl who she was struggling to build that relationship with her parents uh, because they were really putting pressure on her on not taking the wrong route. And they felt that the wrong route for her was, you know, talking to boys and getting into relationships and haram relationships. But that isn't the route that she swayed. She mm -hmm. swayed a different route and she joined a gang. Oh, really? She ended up on drugs. She, and that wasn't something that the parents anticipated. Mm -hmm. Even if you do sit down with them and have that conversation, they wouldn't be so worried about her joining the... Uh, well, I spoke to parents. They weren't so worried about her joining the gang. They were worried that she'd be hanging around with boys in the mm. gang. And that was alarming. Mm. That was very alarming because you join a gang. That's a whole different life. A life that I can tell you that parent did not know how to cope with. Like you were saying, they aren't mm. equipped mm. to deal with it. But that girl could, have, could lose her life. Yeah, that you need to do something and that something isn't having a go at her about not talking to boys it's about making her understand that there's a better way to live and I think that's something that we do need to address now do you know what what's so important with that is with the boy a boy was allowed to come back home at 11 p.m yeah and we all know let's be real we all know a boy could and he, but listen he might be telling the truth he might be just going to the cinema yeah but there's other things that he could be doing only mm -hmm. because he is so much more exposed to it mm -hmm. than a yeah. girl is. And I will say that I'm not saying that girls aren't exposed to drugs because they are, but because parents keep them at home mm -hmm. or they keep them busy with other things, yeah. they aren't as exposed to it. But there's also the point of that same girl. She wasn't allowed out. Yeah. She mm -hmm. wasn't yet. She always found a way to sneak out. Yeah. And when she snuck out, she was exposed to it. 
Now, if her parents had let her go to the cinema yeah. with her friends, she would have gone to the cinema with her friends. Yeah. And I think I, I, I saw a difference between myself and my sister when my older sister, she wasn't allowed out. Um, she was five years older than me. She wasn't allowed out at my age. But then my mum became a lot more lenient mm-hmm. with me just because she'd understand, she understood mm-hmm. that di- the, the difference. And she never made me feel any different from a boy. Yeah. You're a girl. You're going to go out. You're going to see things in life. Yeah know how to deal with it, those exactly. situations. If you are approached with any situation that it may be, know how to deal with it. You are smart. Yeah. There's no difference between you and a boy. You are a strong woman. Exactly. Mm. exactly. And I think that's what we need to be reminded of. No matter who you are, if you are a woman, we are not the weaker gender. We shouldn't be the ones who are kept at home. Yeah. We should be the ones who are who should be empowered to be and let, be able to kind of be free in yeah. making our own choices. Because yeah. we, I, uh, what I do find is that girls are becoming more and more mature Mm -hmm. especially within our generation we are so much more mature and that maturity is what's helped us get through some of the things that we've seen in our life and also the way we are raised yes because our parents have explained to us what we should do and they've set us limits that and they've given us that freedom but within limits whereas if they go completely extreme and set just a no-no on everything and you're going to be hidden with this little bubble It's not going to be a bubble of safety. In fact, it will have the opposite effect because you will then, because if you're, if if I tell you you can't have chocolate today, how much more will you crave it? 10 times more. more. Exactly. This is the same thing. If you tell a kid you can't do that, they will go and do it. They'll find Mm -hmm. a way. If there's a will, there is a way. way. 100%. So I think if they sit them down, educate them and set them a limit, you can go out with your friends, but there's a time limit. You can go out with them, but obviously don't go to these places. Don't go to pubs. Don't drink. Don't smoke. Um... Etc. And if you become friends with them, what my parents beautifully do is they always let my brothers invite their friends over for football for Ramadan. So acting like my brothers are the hosts and my mm-hmm. mom does everything. But that's their way of getting them into the house, meeting every single person, yeah. knowing who they are, chatting to them. I think um, suffering is really important to build. Sorry. Like it's the things that we go through. It's the loss that we've endured. It's the struggles that we've had to go on in life that helps build our character. There's situations that I've been through that I was destroyed me I feel like and I really lost myself as a person there was a point in my life that I didn't know who I was and I didn't know where I was going and I really had to build my strength to get through it and yeah. alhamdulillah with my family support and everything I I can sit here today and say like I'm in a best place yeah but it's built my character in such a way that I'm a completely different person yeah I can be able to if it happened again to me I'll be able to go through it easily Exactly. And I think there's a thing that Allah only puts you through things that you can handle. Yeah, yeah. no, that is so true. Um, the, the tests that we go through that Allah has given us, we, he would never give them to us unless we could handle it. And every time you open a door, one closes. Every time you close a door, one opens. Yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's like, um, it's a cycle. And we don't see it though. When you're yeah. in that moment, you don't see it and you don't think like that at all. There's so many situations where I've been in as well, experiences with other people that just made me lose hope and faith in humanity all at once, which is really unfortunate because it happens from those that are closest to you. And you just think seriously, like this is this is not this is not what's right. This is definitely not justice. And it's it just then makes you question everything. But when you overcome it with the strength that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places in you and you move on to the next stage. You reflect back and looking back on it, I just realized that, you know, I was right. I was right all along and I stood strong to my morals and my character and it actually made me stronger. And it just confirmed that all the morals and the views and the opinions that I hold are actually right. And we all go through mistakes. That's, that's nothing wrong. It's just part of being a human. We're not infallibles at the end of the day. But making that mistake over and over again, that is bad. But learning from it and reflecting back on it and becoming stronger yeah. and kind of true to yourself because, you know, you can put on a facade in front of people. You can walk the walk and talk the talk. But are you true to yourself? Yeah. Allah's bad is watching at all times. Whatever you do, whatever you say between yourself, the amount of times you do, but that's what matters the most. And that's what builds your strength of character. Because I think a lot of people kind of get lost into putting that facade on, on the outside, showing that they are the most respectful and caring and pious and generous whatever person but then within themselves when they're alone they're actually none of these things they're not respectful they're not nice they're not pious and you know it's between you and god but then how does it impact when you treat other people in the street when it comes to it will you actually show those values or no is it just for a short term time when you when you have to put the facade on there's actually a thing that my dad tells me like the way i look at people 
not to look at their praying and their fasting that doesn't determine how religious I think it's actually a hadith but I don't yeah. know it word from yeah. word but um that you look at someone's character and the way they act if you read between the lines you see how they are as a person and how they treat you exactly and I think the key word that keeps coming up is reflection and I think that is what makes someone stronger that's what makes someone think about the things that they've done and how they can do better and I think that is what you guys are actually trying to say in you do become a stronger person you do become a better person through the experiences that you've been through and I and it's just amazing that through pain comes goodness you know that that is just enough for me to get through everything because I know I'll come out of it stronger yeah. so yes I, I I'm being destroyed right now but it's okay there's a light at the end of the tunnel like you were saying yeah, yeah. The strength of character that Sayyidina Zainab salam displays just motivates um, me to rise above all struggles and all disappointments um, with humanity. To be honest with you, um, and because she's been, she's been through that when um, when she's been in a, in a time where where everything was going just against Islam, basically. Yeah, where tyranny and corruption yeah, it existed, yeah. and she had those morals and those values. She kept them within her. And you hear that within her sermon mm. in Yazid's court. Mm. She, you hear that when you, you can see how she maintained her hijab, how she maintained her self-respect and the respect of her family when she, they, they were being moved, the children and the women, they were being yeah. moved after the tragedy over to Yazid. And she was still a respectable woman. She yeah. still maintained all those values. And you can just see the strength of that. And I don't know if I, you know, if I don't know if I was in that situation and I was going through each and every single step that I was, I'd be able to keep that strength mm. of, because you sometimes you end up losing and forgetting your values when you're put in a situ- really bad situation, yeah, yeah. a situation that drains you out. And I can't imagine any other way that Sayyidina Zainab alayhi salam would feel, but drained. I think that comes from a lack of faith. Like when we go through struggles nowadays, you you lose that faith and you're like, why God, why would you put me through this? Like, what have I done? When Sayyidina Zainab kept her faith so strong and what got her through it is that she had faith in God that this was going to be okay. Like no matter what, it was going to work out. And she put that faith in God that like, it doesn't matter. Like I know I'm going through hell right now. But at the end, it's going to be worth it. And that's something we can learn from. Yeah, and I think she drew that strength from her belief in Allah. Like you yeah. were saying that her aqidah, the, the fact that she actually, she was so faithful to her God. Everything mm-hmm. that she was doing was in the name of yeah. Allah. And I think that's where she drew her strength from, but also yeah. from her family. Exactly. She's, like you were saying, it's the way you're raised. Now, she was raised in the, one of the most, she, the actual most amazing family. And you can't think of a better way to be raised. Yeah. And so she, I think she's learned that strength. And also got it from those who are around her, the children and the women, trying to make make sure that they are protected. Yeah. So even when her mother passed away, yeah. she got that strength from knowing that she still has her brother. She's yeah. still her brothers. She still has her father. Sayyidina Zainab's grandfather was Rasulullah, and uh, mother Fatma Zahra alayhi salam and Imam Ali was her father. And we we all know her siblings like Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Imam Hassan. So she's been through the deaths of every single one of them and she's witnessed it. And yet you still stay strong because you know this is all written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is all his plan. It's all part of the message of Islam that will all lead on to the message of Karbala later on. So Mm -hmm. from a very young age, Sayyidina Zainab knew about the message of Karbala, knew what will happen in Karbala to her brother in front of her eyes. But yet she had to stay strong because she was, her and Imam Zain al-Abidin were the messengers that then carried on that message of Islam so beautifully through the further struggles across Syria.